Hi, this is Griffin Connor of First Updates Now, coming to you from the Chesapeake District Championship in George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. Today, I am here with 8592 Newton Squared, and today they're here to talk about the multiple mechanisms on their robot and their match strategy going into their multiple events that have even resulted in them going undefeated one time. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on, real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. So let's take a look at the robot right here. So what all goes on in the robot right here? What are some of the key mechanisms? So we have three key mechanisms. We have our elevator, we have a six bar over here, and we have our intake. Our intake, we decided to go with a roller system to be able to pick up uh, cones and cubes much faster. We have our cones come in through here, and we have compliance wheels, but we have a motor over here that drives the chain, which then drives this axle with the compliance wheels to then uh, turn all our shafts. We decided to go with compliance wheels instead of gears because they so that the motor has a less likely chance of burning out since if a cone gets stuck in here with gears, it would keep on driving and we'd have a chance of wearing down the motor while here instead they slip. So even if this gets stuck, the motor can just spin and it, it won't burn out as quickly. We have our cubes come up here. So whenever we're, we pick up cubes from the ground, so whenever they come in, they get caught by this wheel and then kind of walk up the wall. We have a hard stop to make sure we still have control and then we can outtake them quickly too. All right, so, and we also have this impressive elevator system that just goes on a tilt and pulls everything up. What all is going on with that? So the primary design criteria for our robot and as a whole this year was keeping it as low as possible. So we acknowledged at the beginning of the season that we could do an elevator and not have any extra actuation for tilting it, but we actually decided to add that slight bit of added complexity so that we could lower our center of gravity because we anticipated a very clogged field and lots of traffic. We decided that we'd wanted that elevator to come down so that we wouldn't be tippy and that we could just fly across the field and keep all wheels on the ground at the same time. The design challenge though came in actually actuating this elevator because it sits down so low, we have very, very limited space on how we can control it. So if I come around to this side, um, we have a system of linkages that drives this elevator up. So actually, can you enable it? It might be easier to just see it. Okay, can you prime it? So this is effectively a six bar. So you have this first driving linkage, which pulls this tie rod, which pulls this uh, bell crank, uh, which drives the four bar, the main four bar linkage, which is the one, two, three, and four. And the interesting thing with this design is it's an unstable over center so that this linkage drives so it's perpendicular to this, which means that these are in line so that as the lift tries to press down, it forces these links directly into each other so we don't need any motor power. Um, when we designed this, the, the trick came with the compound uh, linkages is maintaining a somewhat stable leverage rate. So we actually created a calculator that will um, simulate that motion. So the first part of the calculator here is that you have the geometric representation of the four bar. So you can, you can move it, right? But then using, we take the first derivative of the position of these two points and you multiply that by the length, of, you divide it by the length of these bars and it actually gives you the leverage rate of the bars. So right here, these red lines this is actually the representation of the leverage curve of our motor on this, this first bell crank right here. And we can use that to help optimize our feed forward and our software control. All right. And so you guys have gone to great extents of, and great show off of this, including a, an event where you guys went undefeated in Alexandria. So what all is your match strategy going into it? What do you guys choose, to the, or choose and prioritize when going into each match? So we knew that 
each match starts with an autonomous period where points are worth slightly more, which increases your scoring capabilities. So we knew that we needed to have a successful autonomous to be successful with the season. So one of the biggest, one of the first things we, uh, one of the first things we did was we created a list of different autonomous for each of the different sides. So we have the cable cover side, uh, middle side, and loading zone side. And we have various autonomous for each section there. When it comes to what we actually do in autonomous, we prioritize links over points when it comes to auto because we know going to teleop that'll help us with the RP. So, and the points as well. So going into teleop, we know that links is where we're gonna have to spend most of our time on. We know that the middle section is not as valuable as the top and not as valuable as the bottom because of time. So we tend to go top and bottom. And uh, these LEDs also help, these LEDs also help out with, um, with uh, the process as well. Uh, if you want to show them. So when we're going in just to grab a cube, we flash the cube signal. When we're going in for a cone, we flash the cone signal. So this allows us to help with a human player and then if we're going in for a lot of cones, uh, cubes at once, we might want to flash that to our human player as well. So, and then when it comes to end game, pretty much the strategy is, again, RP. We know that a lot of teams, so it may be, sometimes it may be impractical to go for the triple balance, so we go for double over triple sometimes. So. All right. Well, on behalf of First Step Days Now, thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day, and good luck to you guys in the rest of the competition. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash FIRST updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash firstupdatesnow. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash firstupdatesnow. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.